right. Welcome to Yorba Radio, also streaming to you live on yorbamedia.com. I'm your host, Michael Yorba. All right. Nick Santiago, president and CEO of InTheMoneyStocks.com, is with me now. Uh, Nick is going to be with us for two segments, so there's a lot of time for everybody to ask him the questions. Uh, Nick, you knocked it right out of the park. I mean, just to give a, I wanted to make sure I had this right. I went back and listened to last week's segment, and you were so right on. It was It's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, really. I, I was just saying, you know, it's... It's not easy to find guys like you that actually can do the job right. And you did it. I'm really proud of you. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Appreciate the nice comments. It, it, it has been, uh, it's been a good, uh, very good 2011. And to you know, do what we did uh, this past week and to have this correct, especially with all the Fed news and ECB news going on and everything else uh it's been it's been pretty good so well, i'm very happy and fortunate for for the people that didn't hear last week's broadcast i'm going to bring this up i was looking for a top on the 16th and you went nah you know maybe a little bit more and i'm thinking wednesday is a good day for that let's see let's see what happens with the fed meeting and sure enough that was the day that it did tank <laughs> yeah i i actually put out a, a cycle top alert to subscribers for the tuesday afternoon the 20th and uh if you notice that day, the market rolled over as well. Uh, we were up about 100 plus points, and we finished uh, basically negative on, on everything except for the Dow. The Dow, I think, finished up seven points or something. So uh, it actually started on the 20th, and uh, the 21st with the Fed meeting was just a real continuation of that. And uh, you know, we've we've lost now on the Dow basically from the 20th top to the low is over 900 points on the Dow. So yeah, it was pretty pretty remarkable decline. Yeah, you were talking about 1150 support. Once it breaks it, then that's where your, you know, your your flags are coming out. What's what's gone? We broke it. Yeah, we broke it. Um, we broke it yesterday, in fact. So uh, it was it was actually moved up because it was a rising trend line that we were using. So it wound up being around 1168, but uh, we broke it yesterday and followed through today. So all of my subscribers were short uh, really since Tuesday. And uh, have we've locked in a little bit of gains, uh, probably half our gains we've locked in on shorts across the board. Okay. As you know, I've talked about uh, the industrial metals as well. And, we, you know, later I guess we could talk about that. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, we better because i I got to look at that, and that's another one you nailed. Yeah, so we, we, we've done pretty well uh, here. We've taken some profits off the table, and uh, we're actually looking for more downside. I mean, there's always a chance of a little bit, some bounces here, but uh, because the industrial metals are so extended, but... Uh, I think we're going actually going to go lower. Okay, let's let's stay on one subject first. Uh, the S and P. Sure. Are you finished with what you, you said? Lower. I mean, do you th- are you thinking maybe a little bounce to resistance and then fall off? Or yeah, yeah. I think okay. Uh, okay. You may get a little bit of a bounce here just because things are are we've gotten oversold so quickly. So I think there's a chance of a little bit of a bounce. Plus, uh, there's a lot of stocks that are, are really stretched. Freeport Macmorans of the world. So there's so many leading stocks that are, are so stretched to the downside. Dead cat balance at best. That's what I think could happen at, at now. But uh, okay, well, I, I'm let, still holding my shorts. But you, wait a minute. I wanted to stop on that one because that's one that you talked about last last week and was around, what, 42? Yeah. And, and uh, what what is it? What is that symbol? F, FXC? FCX. Yeah, FCX. Oh, FCX. Yeah, yeah. I think... Yeah, what well, last time we spoke about it, uh, it was trading around 42 and a half, and I said, you know, this thing could trade down to 30 in a blink of an eye, and uh, we're there. Uh, 32, bang. Yeah, look, yeah, today I guess we get, did get down as low as 30.97, so and, enough for government work so far. <laughs> yeah, well, wait a minute. Now that we're on that, I want to also bring something out, too, because this, this, is, this was really some sharpshooting on your point. I'm going to bring it out because, you know, this game is so hard to do. And when you get it right, like you did, here's what you said last week. I think we could go down to 345 on the copper market. You know our close today? 344.80. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. It was pretty close. <laughs> uh, did what? 21 hundredths of a penny off. Good job. What do you think is going to happen next? More follow through? Uh, well, I don't copper- know. Well, if we go look at copper futures, we are definitely oversold here. So, um, okay. and and on top of that, we we really hit a six one eight um, su- 
support level today as well, and that's that's kind of how I derived that number Six, originally. Significant. Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, we're oversold. Um, a little little bit of a bounce here. If we get any kind of a bearish formation on the charts, could sell copper again. I believe we're in a one-year bear market for the industrial metals. Okay, that's saying something. Um, so you're looking for a bounce, and do you have a FIB tool there that you're looking at if we do bounce? Uh, it's really about pattern more so than anything now. Okay. Um, so I would just have to see the formation. It's going to be a wait-and-see type of deal with uh, how this bounces, how this plays out. Maybe if it breaks down, it obviously just gonna, it, it will probably uh, – copper could easily go down to 320. Okay. That, w- that would be the next stop. So it's really just about looking for the formation on the charts. Uh, if it gives us any kind of a sell setup, uh, you could short it again. Okay. Um, well, you got to be in the trading room to really get the accuracy about when to pull that trigger, right? Right, you do, you do. And that's, you know, we always tell everybody, come by the website, take a seven-day free trial. If uh, you want to give us a call, you can always give us a call. We'll be happy to answer any questions, shoot us an email. Oh. Uh, but, you know, you get to ride the uh, the momentum for seven days and see what we're all about. If we're, we're something that you enjoy, you can stick around. In the money com and the phone number? The phone number here is uh, 212, area code 380-1578. Okay. Now you also made another uh, observation about the market, and that was this uh, JJC uh, stock index. And by the way, I've saved a, a couple of uh, question for you in the shout box. Um, uh, that was at uh, what 52 ish last yeah. time we spoke, and now it's at 44. Yeah, that's 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 an exact. That's a copper ETF. And uh, for those that don't have a futures account or trade commodities, you could use the JJC as a vehicle. As well, and uh, we talked about that one going lower, and sure enough, you know, traded down to almost the 44 level today. So um, before getting a little, you know, a little bounce off the lows, but uh, yeah, closed at 44.56, and uh, that was another one that we talked about. And you know, if you're part of the in the money stocks community, you know, I, I've ran through a, a ton of uh, short setups here and uh, declining uh, stocks that we thought would fall, and they really have played out uh, picture perfect. Okay, now I've got a question here from our Dallas audience, and uh, uh, he said he'd like to know entries and exits for trading ETFs. He can't go short in his IRA, but can trade bearish ETFs. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, how would you how would you answer that question? Because you can't really g- give too generic of, a, of an answer over no. the radio. You, I mean, you have to. I, I have a lot of traders that trade their IRA, and um, they'll use the. The bearish ETFs, uh, such as SDS or the SH, to short the, the S&P 500. If you wanted to um, go short the industrial metals, you could use the BOM, okay? And that ticker symbol is BOM. That's the power shares, double base metals, double short. So, I mean, there are a lot of vehicles. That's one vehicle that I had my traders in since about $12.50, ticker symbol BOM. And um, I had them close out that uh, partial position, half the position today, and trail a stop on the rest. So, um, that, you know, that, those are some, some ways you could play it. You, you know, today with the, with the, with the short uh, ETFs, I mean, it, it's great because it gives the IRAs a, a chance to actually compete, where the IRAs, 401Ks, it could never short anything. So it, was, it really isn't, you know, I, I would never, you know, tell anybody to have a 401K if you can't try and short the market. So it's, these short ETFs are, are very valuable right now. I'm looking at this BOM, and, and by the way, it's, it's a great hedging vehicle for something that uh, for your for your accounts. But I'm looking at this BOM, and, and it looks like it's had a complete uh, just nothing but a basing signal here since February of this year, and it just broke out, just went huge up. Yeah, around um, early September, I, I guess it was uh, I think on the ninth September September ninth, I, I alerted my subscribers to it. I said you could just get on board. We'll look for 1375 to 1450, and uh, sure enough, we're we're up there now. So I mean, we've th- these are some vehicles you could play, especially if you have an IRA. I, it's going to be very beneficial to have these uh, these short ETFs, and this one can be played again on a pullback. But right now, it's very extended and overbought. I wouldn't wouldn't go into it now. Right, I, I'm looking at it as. Uh in a completely different manner, aside from just that trading, it's it's a great leading indicator. I mean, any looking at this, it looks like it was giving us a basing buy signal, which I, if you hadn't brought it up, I'd have never known it. What's what's the other one that you you mentioned a second ago? Um, 
the B O M. Did I? What did I say? Yeah, you B O M and one other one. I I missed it. I couldn't type it in fast enough. I apologize, my I don't even remember. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Don't, this is the don't. one that we traded in the uh, in the chat room and and on the uh, for my research center subscribers. Okay. All right. Let's. Uh, we got about a minute left in this segment. You're going to stick around. We'll cover gold and oil on the next segment. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, because of that, the 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 great calls that we're making, and one of which is oil. We've had some people show up on our Twitter uh, following us, and uh, it was a rig count. Um, that's very. Have you ever heard of rig count? No, no, I'm not really familiar with that. An international company that keeps track of the oil rigs. That and other data that are in place in and you know being employed around the world. Wow, that's interesting. It's very very interesting. Top tier for the oil industry for for data dissemination. It's like the Reuters of the oil business. Oh, interesting. Okay, uh, that sounds pretty good. Oh, they are. All right, we're going to come back with uh, Nick Santiago in just a minute. Sit through these uh, messages for our sponsors, and we'll be right back with more great content right out of Nick. We'll be right back. Okay. Welcome back to Yorba Radio, also streaming to you live on yorbamedia.com. I'm your host, Michael Yorba. My guest, Nick Santiago, President and CEO of In The Money Stocks. Next thing. Thanks for coming back. Uh, great to be with you again. Okay. All right. Uh, when we left off, we were talking about the... Uh, um, Oh, these ETFs that uh, you can you can buy that are obviously inverse ETFs that you can uh, are they leveraged? Is this BOM leveraged? Yeah, the, the BOM is a two-time uh, short industrial metals. So that's a power shares two-time short. That one is leveraged. I see a I see a resistance area uh, at 25. It, right now it's at 14. You're looking for a pullback. Do you think uh, this thing's got some legs on it that'll last uh, through 25 on it? I think, uh, yeah, that's a big, big pivot at the 25 going back, I guess, to uh, July 2010. Yeah, ultimately that could get there. But, uh, again, we're going to need to see this thing back and fill a little bit. It, it's getting a little extended now, so I would expect some kind of a, a pullback. But on any any kind of setup, pullback setup, I think you could go long again on that BOM. That's oh. going to be pretty strong this year. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the gold market. Okay. Where do you want to, where do you want to start with that thing? We had a nice nice drop today. Yeah, gold sold off. As you, got, as you know, Michael, I said um, the dollar will start to get stronger. Uh, gold will, will ultimately correct for most of this year. We're going to have pretty good support uh, for those traders out there using the GLD around the 164 level. Uh, for those using uh, futures, uh, let me get my level here. I think it's going to be somewhere, I'm going to have to say, around 16 1685 or so, 1690, somewhere around there. Okay. I think you're going to have a fair amount of support. Uh, yeah, I'll make it 1690, 1685, in that, give, it, give or take, right in that area. Got it. So we're going to have some short-term support. But after, you know, we get any sort of uh, consolidation, you know, gold ultimately could trade a little bit lower, especially since I think that the dollar could go higher. Uh, and, and this is probably what we're going to see. But we're going to get a lifetime buying opportunity for gold again in 2012, and that will probably coincide with, uh, the start of QE3. Okay. Timing, cycles, anything like that? Both. <laughs> I've been trying to uh, cycle out. I haven't done it yet. You know, uh, obviously the Fed just started this QE3, QE1, QE2. So uh, I'm trying to cycle that out now, but I'm coming up with some uh, time frames in, in, in uh, possibly early 2012, middle of 2012. I need to, to refine it a little bit, but uh, I'm working on it. Okay, and when we, we oh, let's call, let's just call it the middle for now because that's a long ways away. Yeah. Um, it, when you're what what are your tools telling you support the lifetime buying opportunity for gold if we get, you know if it trends out like that? I'm thinking around probably sixteen hundred, fifteen, fifteen fifty, somewhere around there. I would I would think you know maybe if we really drop, we'll go to fifteen hundred. But somewhere in that area, I would have to think, is going to be a real desirable level. Okay. Well, that's not very far from here relative to how fast no, this thing is no, going it, up. No, it's, it's really not. The 15, 1500 level will be uh, right around the 50 moving average on the weekly chart. And uh, maybe it's you know a hair lower than that. But in, in that vicinity, I mean, I, I would be tempted to start picking it up again. 
Okay. Now, do you do you trade silver? Do, I mean, do you think do you have any thoughts on the silver market? On the silver market, yeah, yeah. same thing. I think they're going to trade somewhat in tandem with each other. Um, so you you probably could just coincide the two. Silver is known as the the poor man's gold. Uh, I own a, a fair amount of bullion, so and and I, I would be buying uh, again on any any real dip uh, in silver. So. Uh, Somewhere I, I close think, to the May lows, is that what you're thinking? Or yeah, lower? I mean, I'm going to pull it up now. I, I really need to work on the silver levels a little bit better, but uh, I, I'm probably thinking around that uh, thirty dollars, thirty-three dollar level, maybe maybe thirty dollar level. I think for silver, uh, it's hard to pick out an exact level, but I'm thinking maybe a Pierce of thirty, somewhere around that thirty area. Okay, all right. Uh, now, did you want to talk about any other metals before we moved on to uh, to oil? Uh, not really, but I do think that uh, anything iron ore, metallurgic coal, uh, steel, copper, they're, they're all going to be very vulnerable the second half of this year. So I, I know a lot of people think that there's, you know, uh, I think we're going to have a one, we, don't forget, we've had an 11, 10, 11 year bull market in, in, in industrial metals now. So we're due for a good one year pullback or so, maybe uh, 14, 15 month uh, correction in, in these industrial metals. So. That's an area I would uh, tell your your listeners to uh, look to short if you get any significant rally or bounce in them. Are there any um, uh, ETFs that you use that you like to to use to short those with? Well, right now I gave you the BOM, and right. uh, that one's that one I would just stick with. <laughs> just the BOM. Okay, got it. The BOM, yes. All right, let's 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 talk about oil. Okay. Tell me what uh, what your thoughts are there. I believe oil is headed lower. Uh, ultimately, that could uh, be a positive, I guess, for the markets, for the economy. But right now, it, it's oil moving higher is a sign of growth. Uh, oil has been uh, declining. And uh, I think we're going to go down and test that $74 level. Uh, watch for uh, pretty good support around 74 uh, right now. I think that's probably where oil is headed in the short term. Okay, I'll give you that. It looks looks pretty good. It, it, do you think that that support area is strong enough to hold it, or is that depending on other factors that you're going to judge later? Uh, they will, in this kind of environment, it will definitely be uh, judged later with other factors. There's no way of uh, – that's just my near-term level. Uh, we break through there, then you know you can look at $70, maybe sixty nine fifty. But um, that, that's what I'm thinking. And this, down, and, and this move down before we get any, any kind of a significant bounce, you have to think global flow down. Crude probably is headed to 74 bucks. Okay. Purely technical, or are there some fundamentals behind that in regards to employment? Or uh, I have to be honest, Michael. Um, you know, we talk a little bit about fundamentals, but I don't use them at all. Right. <laughs> I'm, pure, I'm a chart purist. Yeah, me, me too. But I, I just you know, thought I'd probe a little bit on that. <laughs> Okay. Um, now, natural gas, do you trade that? I, I have traded natural gas from time to time. I, I haven't done it in a while. I haven't traded it in a while. I think it's kind of, um, I don't want to say dead money, but it looks like it's stalled money right now. It, it, there's really nothing. I don't see anything worthwhile on natural gas at the moment that makes me intrigued. We could be due for, a, I guess, a little bit of a bounce uh, you know, at some point. But there's nothing there. If it got down to around uh, 325, three and a quarter area, I, I would, you know, consider getting, you know, maybe, maybe nibbling on some natural gas futures. But until then, it really isn't much out there intriguing me on natural gas. All right. Well, let, let, let's flip back to the crude oil. Let's say that we do hit the 75 area and you start to get a basing on it. Are you thinking that we could go flat for a while or, or give it a good rally? Oh no! At 74, I, I would probably be anticipating a bounce, depending on the pattern. When we get down there, you know, it's either going to be 74 dollars or maybe the 69, 70 dollar area. But yeah, you, you'll get a, you're going to get some bounces in crude. It's not going to go straight down. Okay, we got a couple of minutes. Let's uh, uh, let's fill them up with what people can expect in uh, out of the trading room, unless you've got another market or ETF you want to talk about. No, no, let's talk about the trading room. That's fine. Tell me about it. Okay, well, you come in at uh, 9.30 in the morning. You get to see our live charts. Uh, you get to hear us. You get to ask as many questions as you like. It's an open forum. You get to speak to me, my partners, and uh, we'll guide you through the markets, tell you exactly what trades we're getting in, uh, where we're getting in, where we're getting out, where our stop losses are. 
Um, people seem to love it. It grows by the day. Most people that come in don't leave. So, uh, how many, I, I would, how many would, people could show up at that thing? Is it unlimited or is there a certain amount that can only be in there? No, it, it's pretty much unlimited. It's pretty much unlimited. So, um, I, I guess, you know, at any given time, there could be a couple hundred people in there at any given time. So, are you guys um, scalping the market and, and, and putting on swing trades or, or is, yeah, yeah, is there something scalping the market, swing trading the market, um, our subscribers, I and mean, if anybody wants to go to our website, you could probably see all the testimonials there. We have a, a, a live uh, interactive uh, forum social media site uh, as part of our new designed website. So you could go on there. You could see all the comments and how people did. And, uh, you know, come take the seven-day free trial. I, I, I think people are crazy if they don't. Uh, that's excellent. All right. Now, that's in the mo- in the money stocks.com and the phone number? The phone number is... Um, 212-380-1578. Real quick, Michael, we have a big webinar this Saturday, so if any listeners are interested, uh, come by, check it out, uh, punch up the, web, the webinar page, and you'll see that we have a big webinar for Saturday. It's going to be about a six, seven-hour event. All right. Great, Nick. Thanks, and keep knocking it out of the park for us. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. You, you too. We'll talk to you next week.